The local advocacy group wants government to show more commitment by fully implementing the Kumasi High Court ruling. Sam Enyankusi, a leading member of the Agro Worldwide Association, sums up the frustration of residents. Part of the feeling and our frustration has been that perhaps the previous government was not assisting, was not helping us. Because once a court issues an order, as we speak, there's a good citizen. The same court, High Court of Kumasi, found him guilty and has been sentenced to death. Meanwhile, he's, he lingers in, 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 at his home in some prisons. The same court was the court that issued the order that the Fulanese should be evacuated and nothing has been done. At least five nomadic herdsmen were either awaiting trial or being prosecuted for murder between December 6, 2014 and January 2016. <laughs> Chairman of the about 1,000 member Agogo Youth Association Emmanuel Boabin fears Agogo could be sitting on a time bomb if government fails to address the nomadic herdsmen menace immediately. 2000 we have discussed this before and that was going to be the last resort because the constitution even gives us the, the permission to defend ourselves. So if the peaceful means fails and we continue to see all these atrocities by the Fulanis, I don't think our people are going to sit back and allow them to take our land. This is a concern shared by the chiefs and people of Kou in the eastern region who feel let down by government's inability to drive the nomadic herdsmen away. Kou Kontihine, Nana Simpe Oredu the third, sums up their sentiments. The best you can see is that the people who na 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 mye mugya na ye de prayer sase ye yankasa be pamu ye yankasa ye de mra ne be she ye nsam ye pamfura ni fo no a de aban pe bi o me ye security experts fear any attempt by locals to take over their own security could spare doom for the country this is former national security coordinator Kofi Bentum Kwansen that the first signal of a national security crisis where the people feel left out by the enforcement system and where their only way of survival is to take the law into their hands to protect themselves and you can imagine the consequences because it will be done in any organized way to be done in the haphazard callous way and that reinforces the conclusion that the matter is a security problem mr Kwansen also a former director of the Bureau of National Investigations, has over 40 years sat on committees to find lasting solutions to the nomadic herdsmen menace. The crisis still haunts the nation and no end appears in sight. Such flip-flopping interventions continue to endanger the lives of locals as Moridin herdsmen and their cattle reduce defenseless citizens into refugees in their own land. Mr. Kwansen partly blames lack of political will, what he describes as too much respect for ECOWAS protocols and corruption for suffering of the people. The problem is visible. The solution is possible. It requires the, the, the political will and the political power and the commitment of the people who are the victims of this for any minutes? See if you sit down there unconcerned, or did they bring you the car, you chop it, or you go and buy the cars to go and sell it. The government ought to be seen to be taking 
concrete measure to deal with the issue, not verbal admonitions that you appeal to them to stop committing crimes or that under ECOWAS protocol they are allowed some measure of freedom. ECOWAS protocols must not undermine our national security. Many rape victims hardly report their ordeal due to stigmatization and fear of collapsing their relationships. In some instances, victims are gagged by the police from speaking to the media. The latest victim is among a few to have had courage to make her ordeal public. The woman has arrived from the north less than a month when she suffered the abuse. She first informed assembly member for Ananikrom electoral area, Peter Abaji. We went to the venue where the incident took place and after that we went to the police station to report. So it's a common thing that has been happening here. But most of the times some of the ladies are afraid to uh, come home and report to their husbands that they have been raped by Fulani men because they, are, they fear to lose their marriage. When we got there, we, we saw that they struggle a lot on the uh, ground and then we found a piece, piece there and then the underwear. Her condition was too bad to the extent that we sent her to hospital. And after hospital, we brought her home. And according to uh, their uh, tradition, we were supposed to go to where the incident took place to perform some certain uh, sacrifice before the husband can sleep with her again. So all those things were done. The 26-year-old woman was raped on the farm by armed nomadic herdsmen on May 14, 2017 at Nsunyameye village near Hiatokro. The victim was sewing maize on the field when a mask-wearing nomadic herdsman attacked her. She was treated and discharged at the Agogo Presbyterian Hospital. Police in Agogo later arrested a nomadic herdsman for the incident. I tried to free myself from his grips. The Fulani man strangled me until I became weak. I grew weaker and weaker as he sexually assaulted me. After the act, he abandoned me and left. I crawled to the roadside until some people came to my rescue. I want him in prison. Former spokesperson for the nomadic herdsmen in Agogo, Musa Ali admits to involvement of his tribesmen in criminal activities. He has, in fact, helped police to arrest offending herdsmen. Hey, anakure. Anakure de wumpa. Me ntra me kase, me masen biya no. Me infansi ye. Ntra me chase krubiya, me nipa biya me sa wu. Do <laughs> Destruction by herdsmen and the cattle has plunged many farmers in Agogo in debt 
in bank loans to expand their farms. They cannot pay because they cannot continue with their farming occupation. Unlike the coal area where farms are average sizes, those in Agogo are much bigger. Kwame Riafi, father of seven, owns a 40 hectare plantain farm at Bonfum near Ananikrum. He lost 30 out of his 40 hectare farm to the nomadic herdsmen invasion within two days. As if that is not enough, Mr. Riafi was arrested in November 2016 for failing to repay a 20,000 Ghana CD loan, equivalent of 5,100 US dollars, excluding interest he took from the bank. I can say that I am going to be a good one. 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 The HS is going to be in the bank or friend beside me say, I don't know if it's going to be my. I mean, I say, I don't know if it's going to be my friend for a question. I don't know if it's going to be a question. I said, I'm going to be a bad one. I'm going to be a bad one. I said, I'm going to be a friend. I'm going to be a manager. I'm going to be a friend. I'm going to be a manager. I'm going to be a bad one. I'm going to be a bad one. I'm going to be a bad one. It was at the police station. I'm a police for F2 Safrebe. We go around checking checking police for a juman amane na ye. Na san say ye juman no. He say it friend for ashi mafu. I say juman na ye mpre no amase na nti. Eh juman amane na ye. Eti. Me friend me dimi hu ni me tu ya kabi ohobi. And he say e kanam so na say na say scan ye 200 million. He say interest in the amane kona ni mu. I ko iska kese bebre. Lying a few meters from Mr. Riafi's farm is another victim, Peter Ajay's plantation. He planted 9,500 sacks of plantain on a 15.5 hectare land in August 2016. By February 2017, that large beaming farm had been reduced to a mere playing field. A few scattered plantain trees wide apart away of each other remain. Mr. Ajay now prefers to describe his farm as a playing field. Music my way of funing in a sail. And the army Bahan said, Me Benin, I'm Hanma. Be a dark could be the enemy who fled in the my flat police among my bachelor. So the Bahan will be who we are. Yeah, I'm a raw who be free. And to me, my crown fed the animal that said, Be a bar, many badges and metals yet. Be who look at a common name. A son, Brah, my bre, and a crown of fast war, Minya, Bussia, the air, Jumana, I will do peppers, you see. Fifty-two-year-old Abna Fosia broke down in tears when she saw her plantain farm destroyed by cattle. It's the second time in two years the animals have ploughed through her crops. The degree of devastation is higher than before as the normas set the farm ablaze to boost growth of fresh grass to feed their cattle. Fosia took 40,000 Ghana CD loan from Sinai Piaba Savings and Loans for her farming project at Abrewapong near the Chinchenku Mountains. I was like, I was like, I was like, I and at the bus, I see where she may have Juma. In few minutes, and then she and say, No, until last year, I need to send the Padua Sayan Bassa Sisu. Any engine has a kind who bore my Nimiku, yes, I have a yes, I'm quite what you be said. Be a son by a year for almost fifty acres. A kind of say, I'm what Nasam Ketua, Nisame Baya, and she has say a funny, I just say, Mrs. Seka, Minimiku, I'm a fashion that just a car is a The 
42-year-old Nanajua also has harrowing stories to tell. Together with Fosia and three others, she visits her farms each occasion for fear of being attacked by nomadic herdsmen. It is a common practice for other farmers whose plantations are about 1,000 meters apart of each other. In 2016, Nanajua spent 7,000 Ghana CD loans from separate sources to erect barbed wire fence around her 30 hectare farm. It is an emerging method adopted by some local farmers in Agogo to protect their farms from nomadic herdsmen and their cattle. Wooden posts of about 2 meters high from the ground and about 8 meters apart hold two strands or more barbed wire together. She chose this arrangement over having to pay five unarmed young men 15,000 Ghana cities to protect her 30 hectare farm for two months. <laughs> It is not a rush, and we say, Self for no many a bit of jammy mess school fees. Many baby duck cry, many a bit at the aye dying crow be at them. Met me the abom and hubra. Nancy so uncle Banis, I'm a madica. Into me near Russia, maybe as I may say, I'll call yourself who can see any beam. I feel dear, many a margin. If you say, Say friendly for no hard dear, many a margin. She is putting up a five-bedroom semi-detached apartment now at lintel level with proceeds from her farming venture. Her kids' school fees have never been outstanding. Back to her farm, the fence has made no impact. Her crops have been raised down by cattle. Apparently, nomadic herdsmen have cut through the barbed wire to let in cattle. Last week, yeah, be yeah, yeah. Ni ma ma mi en sa ne bai. En on be ki kan ni nyina si ani mu. Omo awi a, si si ho kwa do omo bubu. Omo bubu bo de ni nyina. He said emu hu afu na wani mo ye ni nyina ne bia ne pe. E na we de omo akondem afu ni sa. Farming is no longer a lucrative venture in Agogo. Many are shying away from what used to be inviting and prospering venture. Issa Dauda has abandoned his farming to learn carpentry. The proverbial phrase, when life gives you lemon, make lemonade sums up his story having braced the storm to become the only carpenter at Bebome, a nomadic herdsman populated community. There are thousands of cattle raiding farms at Bebome, Nyamibetre, Koreso, Bebuso, Abrewapon, Mankala, and Braha Bebome. The Normans have a camp between Koreso and Bebome. There was little Isa the father of five from two wives could do when his men seize his farms. As I was a farmer, so the farming system, it helped me a lot. So I used to turn my this mind back that if I get going back this in train as a computer, it will help me more than the farm because the full and the people at the moment you can't go to the farm at this time because they capture all the farm. They are holding AK-47 with heavy, heavy this guns there. So we can't go to our farm to harvest anymore at all. For Isa, nothing will attract him back into farming once the nomadic herdsmen and their cattle continue to devastate farm with farmers facing the risk of attack if they resist. At the moment, if the Fulani people did not leave this area, very soon I will even live here because I can't, be, I can't be here. For this area, it's very dangerous for us to work. Either even in the carpentry side here, sometimes they used to pass here with guns out and what, what. The herdsmen set up camps between the two communities with whom they share the only stream and two hand dug wells for water. A herdsman who pitched camp here is 43-year-old Ibrahim Ahmad, 
a Malian who claims to have lived in a nomadic life in Ghana for 20 years. Four boys had about 1,000 cattle each to support him. He claims to work for two Ghanaians he identifies as Dada Kasim, a Kusasi, and one Alaji Sambo, who own 4,100 cattle between them. He admits his cattle feed on farmland, but he denies owning a gun. <laughs> My investigations revealed the murder of Mauni and Denji led to the attack on residents of Mepemasem near Heishi in the Kwau East district. Nomadic herdsmen had killed one Emmanuel Boatin. Ibrahim says he and his boys, or Bokinabis, work and live in fear. He admits allowing the cattle to graze in forest reserve contrary the provisions of the Forest Protection Act. He says the situation has resulted in death of people and cattle, for which reason they now move in groups. Ibrahim, like many herders, is aware of calls for evacuation of cattle from the area. They are, however, yet to receive orders from their employers to that effect. He says carpentry job is under threat. People are no longer building new houses to create opportunity for him. At least 10 people relocated from Bebome to settle at Asantimampong in the second week of February 2017. More are expected to Those leave. Those who need furniture or some people need, uh, what do you call it, uh, people to come and roof their room for them. But at the moment, they are running away, so there is no any more job again. So we, I work particular self, I'm deciding to leave the place. Agogo area over the years has been known as the food basket, especially of Ashanti region. Figures from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture reveal downward production and crop yield figures. Maize production recorded negative 7% 7 from 17,322 metric tons in 2014 to 16,084 metric tons in 2015. Plantain recorded a drop from 132,513 metric tons in 2014 to 127,200 metric tons, 5% down. Ashanti Regional Crops Officer Paul Amukran believes the menace and change in rainfall pattern could be responsible. The present has got some effect on crop production. The reason being that normally they come around the dry season. They come down when the rains are season. And looking at the numbers, their numbers has even got some effect on the soil. He warns agricultural programs such as the planting for food and jobs, which seems to encourage especially the youth into agriculture, could suffer under such circumstances. It's a fact that if something is not done about the funeral problem, it can have effect on the government plans on the planting for food and job. A popular plantain market known as Russia Park at Agugu is losing its shine. Meet 53-year-old Akwiam Ponsan, who started trading here as a teenager. She buys truck loads of plantain which she transports to Medina and Agobulushi in Accra for sea. She is busily packing fingers of plantain in a multi-colored nylon bag. Yeah, <laughs>
education in the Asante Achim North District has its share of the devastation. Teachers are refusing posting to their schools in the area, while many children of school-going age prefer to stay home to go into school. Retention is a challenge as classrooms become empty. In some instances, there are no teachers as well. Junior high schools are no better. Majida District Assembly Junior High School is one of the poor performers with 11 students, followed by Onyimso Presby Junior High School with only 17 students. And Esko Jafari is District Director of Education. It's affecting uh, quality education delivery in about two or three ways. Uh, the first one is that uh, the country hears about this full and scare all over. And so it's scaring teachers from accepting persons into uh, this district. And then apart from that too, it also has some effect on enrollment. Uh, most of these communities where we have this at least of the full animal, uh, most of the school going age children are still at home. We cannot enroll all of them. And so it has also affected enrollment levels in our schools. And then we also have uh, retention, retention of those already enrolled. Sometimes too, uh, we lose some of them because of this same full and scare. And so, yes, uh, it has affected uh, quality education delivery, especially in communities such as uh, Patabai, uh, Majida, uh, Oyamso, where the grazing activities of these Fulani men are so pronounced. Some schools in communities inhabited by herdsmen over the years have seen closures. The latest is Koreso District Assembly Primary School. There are fears more schools could be closed down as activities of Fulani herdsmen increase. Education authorities are on high alert as they monitor the situation in schools that are scattered. We hear of reported cases of killings, dead bodies lying in vicinities closer to the school. It scares teachers and people from reporting to school. And so uh, we are constantly monitoring the situation to see if there's any reason to feel that our teachers are not secured. The right thing will be done to close down the school.